Okay, so continuing with our videos on the potential step problem, we already found out what the solutions are going to be for both regions. So basically for x is less than zero, we're going to have an incident wave and a reflected wave. And for x greater than zero, we're just going to have a transmitted wave. And we also established that these k1 and k2 values would just be these two quantities. But for the case of k2, we actually have a difference in energy between E and V0. So if we want to actually find out what happens for each energy level, we need to consider three cases around the point V0. So case number one is going to be let E equals to V0. So if we put that into our equation here, we're going to have the following. We're going to have psi 2x is going to be equal to t because k2 is going to become 0 so this is going to become 1 so we're just going to have a constant value so our wave function will actually look something like this now that's not really very interesting we know that obviously the balance in, er in potential and kinetic energy is retained so nothing really will happen to the particle at that particular case but something a lot more interesting happens if we have something like this. So let's say that E is less than V0. Then our equation is going to be the following. Well, let's think about this. If E is less than V0, then this whole quantity inside the square is negative, which implies that we're going to have a complex number here. So this is going to be T times e to the i times i some constant alpha times x so observe what happens now we're going to have i times i that's minus 1 so this is going to become t times e to the power of minus alpha x and alpha can just be written as this quantity here it's just going to be 2m e minus v naught actually it would be written in the following way. So let me just get rid of that. I'll write it down below here. So alpha is going to be defined in the following way because we already extracted the imaginary unit. We can write this as V0 minus E over H bar squared. So this is just going to be the magnitude of the difference between those two energy levels. So what this represents, you'll notice that this is a decaying exponential function. This represents a wave that is very rapidly decaying to zero. So if we try to draw what's happening here, we have our potential here, and then we have some potential. Our step is coming in this way. So suppose that the energy of the particle is less than that, so it would be oscillating like this. Once it gets to this point, what's going to happen is it is actually just going to decay. It's going to decay like this, and it is going to go to zero. So that makes sense because the particle essentially does not have enough energy to cross this barrier. It, it, if the particle had enough energy, it would go over the barrier, and it would have a probability of existing beyond this boundary here to the right-hand side. But that's not the case. Because if the energy of the particle is less than the potential, then we can imagine that a lot of that energy is either getting reflected or it is just getting absorbed by this potential. To draw an analogy with this problem, we can actually think of this in terms of classical mechanics. If you imagine that you have a wall that extends to infinity and then you have a ball bouncing around. Now, if the ball does not have enough kinetic energy, it will never bounce over the wall. So if its kinetic energy is less than the potential energy of this, then basically the ball is always going to be bouncing around here, but it is never actually going to jump over the wall. So this is sort of the situation we have here with a particle. It does not have enough energy to go across the boundary, so it basically just decays very rapidly. So in this case, we have an ad exponentially decaying function instead. So that's what the case would be for this uh, particular situation. Now, finally, suppose we have the following case. And now we are going to assume that E is going to be greater than V0. Well, what is going to happen in this case is our function is going to be written as follows. If E is greater than V0, then this expression remains the same. So we're going to have T 
t times e to the i k to x. It remains unchanged. This is still a wave propagating to the right. So what this is going to actually imply in terms of our step, we're going to have something like this. Imagine that the step is now a lot lower so that we can visualize what's happening here. If the particle comes in with an energy a lot higher, like that, then the particle is just going to continue traveling, but its phase is going to change. There's going to be a phase change due to this term being different than k1, but its amplitude is not really going to change. So we can imagine that it is there is very little of that function of that wave getting reflected because now it is essentially just traveling over the wall over this potential step so you can imagine that if this were a ball that was bouncing and it has so much kinetic energy that it actually bounced over the wall then it's essentially the ball would just continue to travel on top of that wall on the second level so this is kind of the situation we have here if it so happens that the kinetic energy of our particle, or the total energy of this particle, is greater than the potential step itself, then the particle is just going to freely travel across. So this is why this particular problem is so interesting, because we have three different things happening depending on the energy of the system itself. So, and you will see once we investigate the potential barrier problem that there's a much higher implication when you have a potential step that instead of extending to infinity, it actually comes to a stop. So if we have something like this, there is a phenomenon called quantum tunneling that we will see that is actually rather interesting because it actually means that the particle has a probability of traveling through that potential which could never happen in classical mechanics, but we'll get to that later on. Now the next thing I want to do is to actually find out what those R and T, not what R and T are, but rather the probability that this wave will get reflected or transmitted. So the total probability will be a measure of the reflectance and transmittance of this particular problem. Now that's what we're going to do in the next video, we're going to go in depth in how to do that, and we'll see what that actually reveals about this problem.